Hi everybody. In today's video, I'm going to show you a quick demo of an app called Regionizer. Let me go ahead and create a new project. I'm going to create a Windows form app. I'm just going to call this test. That's fine. Give this just a second to open. Okay, we're going to add a cut just a couple of controls really quickly. I'm going to add just a uh, wrong place. Let me add a button. I'll add a checkbox and a list box just to show you this. Okay, so if you go over here to the code now in the designer part, they always tell you do not modify this code, blah, 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 blah. But we're going to go ahead and just do a format document. And notice it takes the controls and it puts them in alpha. Well, the methods are in alphabetical order. That's all I wanted to show you. It even works on the designer file. So you could just put a little comment designer file. You can mess up Visual Studio if you do that wrong. So you can always hit undo though with this. Okay, so now we've got this little form. We're going to just quickly format it. That is format document. I'm just going to say, we're going to rename this to main form. If I could type. Yes. Okay, and here I'll just change the comment to main form for this app. Now, this is something that I really like. It's called the auto commenter. And if you want to watch this, if I just hit my mouse here and put control shift, it will type that automatically. Now, you may say, how do I automate that in myself if I want to customize that? Well, you can go to the edit comment dictionary. And this will, this uses regular expressions. And if you want to see a video on this or want to learn how to do regular expressions, I have a new video planned. I did use this program here. It's old called Regex Hero and it uses Silverlight even in a desktop app. That's how old it is, but it works pretty well. And if you want to learn Regex, it's a great little program. All right. So now back to Regionizer, I'm going to close this because the comment dictionary is another story. First thing I'm going to do is add a properties region. So I'll just rename this to properties. And then I'm going to add a couple of variables. I'll just put string person name. Uh, we'll go with date time, birth date, int score. And I'll just give it an object called uh, We'll just call it a widget. Don't know what the widget's going to be. Okay, this is something I like. If you go like this and go click create properties, the properties region does not ex okay. It'd be able to spell. Computers do what you tell it. Okay, one more time. Take two. Beep. Okay, so notice it creates all four properties there, and the properties are in alphabetical order. Now here, if I go to widget and say create has property. I have this object called has widget, so all throughout your code, you don't have to say widget not equal to null. So, and you can also do that for birth date, except for it's gonna get this wrong. But you can really quickly change it to where birth date dot year, date dot year is greater than 1900. It's kind of a fake out for dates. Uh, not equal to. It's supposed to be greater than. That's not birth date has birthday. Sorry, I'm having a quick brain melt here. Oh, birth date dot year is greater than 1900. Okay, sorry, that went very unsmooth. Now we'll come up here for person name. This it uses string not null or empty. And for the score, you could also do has score and that would just be a way to kind of for validation it's just useful and save you a lot of code depending on your app but saves you having to write a lot of greater than zero stuff all the time okay this is still okay this is something I gotta do I cannot stand this new feature in Visual Studio 2022 every single project I have to go hit disable that's like the dumbest thing I've ever seen but some people don't know how to test for null, so we'll just have to say unload project, reload project. You know. Okay, now if I build, I'll be back to at least compiling again. 
Okay, so let's show our code again. Sorry about that. That's one of those just pet peeves of progress they wanted. And now our region, when I renamed it, didn't get updated. All right, now I'm going to show you one or two more things, and then we'll go on. Let's say you have a methods region, and you want to add a method. Come over here. Method, the return type. If you don't want to have a return type, switch it to event and go back. Or you could just type in your return type. And I'm just going to call this method init. And I've got some code that kind of looks for that. Where it's something I type frequently. So after in my constructor, after this is called, I'll just say init. And if you use our auto comments, I already checked. So if I hit control shift, that uh, comments typed for me there. And now in our init method, you could do whatever you were going to do. Now I'll show you one last thing. Let's say you. Uh, we'll add our events region. I'll just select that. It's easier than typing. And we'll take out this. And sorry, my keyboard's loud, but I like my mechanical keyboard. I suggest you get one if you program. It's definitely worth it. And I'm going to just add an event here. Let's go to my button on our little designer form. Okay, and we will just, I'm going to make a quick copy of that, because I'm going to want two. It takes Visual Studio a long time to copy one button, but for some reason, it's what it seems to take. Okay, so now we're going to add an event to this one. I'll just pretend it's named something besides button one. Okay, now put my mouse here, and I do have an events region. Format selection, and it puts that in here. Now let's see if I have another event, and I want to do this again format selection it will insert this in alphabetical order so if you have a large team and you know I realize you have this up here to you know, show you the code but it, to me it's nice to have your code always the private variables are in the private variables section the constructors regions the events it's just a way to organize your code so that was my very short video of regionizer if you would like to see more of how to set up the comment dictionary and how to create your own custom dictionary so you can basically if you have code and you always type things you know if you have comments you always want to type even code you want to type because you can always have it generate comments that is a code block and then just uncomment it but uh, re let me know and i'll make another video about that all right thanks for watching and that was my short regionizer video